I've gone onto the One Football app and found five articles that I think will be of interest to my fellow Liverpool fans. You can download One Football entirely free, either on the App Store, the Google Play Store, or you can, of course, use our link below, which we would prefer you to do because that lets the guys at One Football know that we sent you. So, look, I'm going to get stuck into it, but as I said, don't forget, One Football have got you absolutely covered for everything that you need. I know we're coming into transfer season. I know that you guys, like me, love a good transfer story. One Football have you covered with that. One Football also have all the fixtures, video content, everything that you need to keep you up to date for the end of a campaign, the start of the next campaign. And of course, we're coming into a World Cup season as well. So lots to uh, pick the bones out, but I'm going to move on to article number one. The first article that I'm going to speak about is around Arlien Shuameni. Obviously, you guys have heard of Liverpool's interest. Uh, this piece here specifically talks about how the price tag has gone up from a 45 million euro price that he was available for last summer to something around the 60 million euro mark that uh, Fabrizio Romano and uh, Tavaleri, the other journalist involved in this piece, believe that Monaco would look for to take away their prized asset. I'm not mistaken, I don't believe in saying that he was just voted the uh, Ligue 1 Footballer of the Year. So, you know, that goes to show you the, the high quality that you have here with Shuameni. You know, in a league where Kylian Mbappe is there, obviously Leo Messi's there, and many other good footballers playing their trade. For this 22-year-old young man to come out on the top of the pile, he must have something about him. I'm going to be entirely honest, as I've always tried to be. I haven't seen too much of Shuameni playing. Um, regular viewers of the channel will know that I've been absolutely blinded with my desire for Liverpool to sign Jude Bellingham but people that have watched a lot more of Shoe Many than me tell me that this guy is absolutely legit and would fit like a dream particularly on the right hand side of a Liverpool midfield. Uh, this article also goes on to speak about Cesc Fabregas saying that himself and a couple of other the Monaco players are destined for top clubs like Bayern Munich, Liverpool etc. Now of course when you've got a talent like Shoe Many available this summer or believed to be available for around 60 million euro you're not going to have a shortage of of clubs who are willing to uh, put their hand in their pocket so this piece has cited interest from Liverpool of course uh, we know there's interest from Real Madrid and many other top clubs around Europe so Reds what I want to know from you is have you watched much of Chouameni and do you think he would be a good fit for this Liverpool squad the price tag I mean look we know he's the right age bracket you know that kind of early 20s age bracket is the entry level bracket to Liverpool basically if you're going to look to start very few times you go out and sign somebody 18 19 will come in and start but I would imagine if you are going to spend this much money and bring in such a young talent like Shuameni you would expect him to be starting so freshening up midfield probably a position that we all thought was going to be freshened up in the summer you know we could lose Alex Oxley Chamberlain he's in the last year of his contract we know that now Bikeda although Klopp wants to renew was also in the last year of his contract and also of course James Milner and Jordan Henderson uh, father time waits for no man even if you're Jimmy Milner so I think it's a good idea that Liverpool look to the midfield market this summer and Shoemany certainly seems to be hot property so why not go and uh, bring him to the Liverpool family let me know your thoughts in the comment section the second story is basically just uh, a little celebratory story because Liverpool have now confirmed that a parade will take place on May the 29th regardless of what happens over in Paris in the Champions League final. Liverpool having already done the domestic cup double this season uh, have been granted a parade in the city of Liverpool that will take place the day after the final in Paris. Now an interesting twist to this and I think a lovely twist to this is that not only will it be the men's senior team that are there for the parade of course the ladies team who won the championship this season and got promoted back up to WSL they will also be paraded through the city to uh, to allow Liverpool fans to congratulate them on their achievements and celebrate their success as well um, I know a lot of people when we talk about parades and stuff like that a lot of people think it's a bit getting ahead of ourselves to talk about a parade ahead of an event that hasn't happened but as I'm sure you could imagine now that it's been confirmed no matter what happens it's going to happen grand but a lot of people were thinking it would only happen if you know we won the league or we won the, the Champions League and these type of events need a lot of planning I mean you're talking somewhere here probably be circa of half a million maybe to three quarters of a million people on the streets of Liverpool depending you know what way the last day of the season goes and of course what way the Champions League final goes but it is great to have confirmation that this will be happening the day after the Champions League final to celebrate both the men's and women's team's success and again let me know if you're going to be there and let me know if you are going to be there if you've been there in previous years what's the best vantage point what's the best place to go have you any secrets that you'd like to share with the uh, Anfield agenda community let me know in the comment section 
The third story that I'm going to talk about today is one that doesn't make me very happy whatsoever. It is that apparently Paris Saint-Germain have made contact with Mohamed Salah and his representatives about a potential move in the summer. Now the article goes on to say that Liverpool are resolute in their their stance that they don't want to lose Mohamed Salah this summer. But as we all know, the contract situation being as it is and the fact that Paris Saint-Germain may lose Kylian Mbappe quite frankly, they probably will lose Kylian Mbappe this summer to Real Madrid. It's no surprise to me that they would come sniffing around the talent like Mohamed Salah. We know there's a contract impasse right now. This piece, interestingly, one line that I took from this piece in particular was that if Liverpool and Mohamed Salah do agree a new deal, that it could potentially make him the highest paid player in the Premier League. Not just at Liverpool Football Club, or not just in the history of our football club, but potentially the highest paid player in the Premier League. Now, this is where we come to the tricky part. Everybody wants Mo to renew. Everybody I've, spe- I've, I've spoken to wants Mo to renew his contract, me included. But there does come a time where I think we will have to draw a line in the sand here because if this impasse continues, and again, I hope it doesn't, then I think the club have to look to to force the issue a little bit, whether that's, you know, maybe open their offer to Mohamed Salah or whatever it might be. Somebody has to concede here. Somebody has to give ground if there's genuine goodwill. And and I like to believe there is goodwill on both sides to make this deal happen. It needs us to get it sorted because the longer it draws on, particularly over the summer, the bigger a headache it becomes. And as I don't need to remind you, good folks, we are going into a summer where Sadio Mane, Mo and Bobby are all going to be entering into the last years of the current Liverpool deals. And... I can't envision a situation where Liverpool allow Mohamed Salah to leave in a year's time on a free, potentially like Paris Saint-Germain are doing with their star uh, star man in Kylian Mbappe. So this is one that I know is a very tricky subject to broach with my fellow Liverpool fans because obviously everything Mohamed Salah has done at our club, the numbers that he's put up are just ridiculous. But I am intrigued to know your thoughts in the comment section. If Liverpool had to sell, if he couldn't agree a deal with the club... What intrigues me about this most is what what type of numbers would we be talking? Now, I hope we don't ever find out because, again, I want to reiterate, I want him to stay. But what type of numbers would we be talking for a player like Mohamed Salah with one year left on his contract? Again, love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Story number four, my friends. And unfortunately, it doesn't really get any better about potential outgoings because this story once again brings us to PSG, once again brings us to Liverpool forward, but this time the story is about Sadio Mane. Um, There's an interesting quote as well in the piece that says that Sadio Mane maybe has, again I'm paraphrasing here, but has visions of, of of going elsewhere or maybe his mind is already elsewhere, but again I want to reiterate, I hope that Liverpool can agree a deal with Sadio Mane that will keep him at the football club because, you know, I've said this many times, since he's been put through the centre, I think he looks like a man that's reborn. Obviously, had a great year at an international level, won the AFCON with Senegal for the first time and, of course, qualified for the World Cup as well. But something that I've always said, and, you know, regular viewers of our channel will know this, is that all the pomp and the talk and the media presence and articles and talk on phone in shows and talk amongst those fans has been about Mohamed Salah and his contract situation. But Sadio Mane has just quietly gone about his business. And I've always said that if if the rumours that he is on a hundred grand a week compared to Bobby who's apparently on about a hundred and eighty now and, and Mo who's on about two hundred, if that is the case that Sadio is only on a hundred grand a week, I think he's every right to feel a little bit aggrieved and I think that you know, I hope again the club can can talk and come to a, an agreement on a figure that works for both parties because I think he's a lot left in him, Sadio Mane. I think there's a lot more to give in this team and I'd love to see him evolve as the team grows as well. With obviously Luis Diaz now on the left, Diogo Jota at the club. Uh, we most likely going to see Fabio Carvalho announced soon as well. So, you know, adding to that Harvey Elliott and we have a good bunch of attackers or midfielders in Elliott's case these days. And who would have thought, by the way, I never would have thought that Jurgen Klopp was going to make Harvey Elliott a right side of midfield. I would have sworn that he was going to be Mohamed Salah's uh, competition on that right hand side but anyway tangents and you know I like to go off on tangents Sadio Mane I think and I hope that the club can come to an agreement somewhere maybe about the 250 300,000 pound a week mark which I think is probably fair value for for somebody of Sadio's attributes and what he's achieved at the club I don't think 
I don't think he deserves to be on parity with Mo, if I'm being entirely honest. I think Mohamed Salah has, has consistently put up crazy numbers for Liverpool Football Club. And I know he's you know fallen away a little bit towards the end of the season for whatever reason, but you can't argue with his numbers. His goals and assists have been fantastic. But Sadio Mane has been a massive, massive part of our success. And I'm somebody that believes greatly in continuity. So again, I hope the club can get this resolved and I hope we can keep him out of the grasp of PSG or any other club that would be interested in Sadio. And look, it's not a surprise to me that the top clubs are interested. Why wouldn't they be? We're talking about an unbelievably gifted footballer here, uh, a very humble man as well and somebody who always sacrifices himself for the team. So again, fingers crossed on this one, but we'll move on to the last story of the day. The last story of the day is a bit more of a positive one, and that is um, basically just confirming Liverpool's interest in Jared Bowen, somebody who Klopp has labelled unbelievable at times, according to the headline of the article. And you know what? I don't need any convincing on this, so my friends, I, along with Chris, have been banging the drum about Jared Bowen for nine months minimum now at this point. I don't know what the price would be. I don't know if West Ham will be willing to lose him. But interestingly, there is a train of thought, and this article mentions it, that maybe Alex Oxley chamberlain could in some way be used, I don't want to say as a make way in the deal, but Alex Oxley chamberlain going one way, Jared Bowen coming the other way, obviously with, with money on top of Alex Oxley chamberlain 60 million in my head is around where I think the valuation of Jared Bowen is from West Ham. Um, now again, West Ham fans, you may well disagree with me and I, I respect your opinions, but what I do say wholeheartedly without any shadow of a doubt is that he will fit in Liverpool's system if we were to sign him. He is another player who works tirelessly for the team. I think he would buy into Klopp's pressing mentality and I think he would slot seamlessly anywhere uh, into our team. I do. And it's no surprise to me that Jurgen Klopp maybe has, has pinpointed or targeted Jarrod Bone because he's developed magnificently well again 25 years of age kind of falls into the exact same age bracket as Diogo Jota Luis Diaz other additions that we've added to our squad in recent times so the only part of it that has me worried is if Liverpool are going to go and try to bring in Jared Bowen is that maybe a sign that we will lose one or two of the old guard forwards I don't know but on its own just taking it in its own context I do like the idea of Liverpool signing Jared Bowen I very much like it and I also like the idea of Alex Oxley chamberlain going to West Ham as part of the deal and also for Alex himself. Obviously, I don't know Alex Oxley chamberlain but he always comes across as a very down-to-earth, nice, humble, uh, happy dude. So if it's happy, if, if it works for Alex and his, his uh, young family, then, you know, best wishes to him wherever he goes if he leaves Liverpool. But I do like the idea of Mr. Bowen coming to Liverpool. I do. I can very much see him as a... Uh, as a staple of Jurgen Klopp's team moving forward. But we would have a massive battle on our hands because West Ham this season have shown that they are a club that are looking to, to push on. Uh, they were very unfortunate not to perhaps to go all the way in the Europa League. Looking, as I record this, like it's most likely going to be Europa Conference League football for West Ham next season. They're currently in seventh place. And I don't I think they might need United to lose on the last day of the season and them to win to, uh, to push themselves into Europa League play. So then the question becomes, how patient would Jared Bowen be? Because I've no doubt that he's aware at this point the top clubs are looking at him and you know his performances have caught the eye of many football fans. So once again, let me know, is 25-year-old Jared Bowen good enough to slot into this Liverpool team and what type of price do you think Liverpool would be looking at if they were to prize him away from West Ham? Right, my friends, that brings to an end this latest Anfield agenda that one football news crossover video don't forget everything that i've spoken about in this video you can find in the entirely free all conquering fantastic one football app there is a link in the description of this video that will bring you to the correct landing page where you can download the one football app free get yourself your fixtures get yourself your transfer stories video content everything ready for the end of the season the start of next season and of course the world cup that's coming up as well one more thing i always love to mention when we discuss one football is that they are fantastic supporters of football fan content without one football helping channels like ourselves we wouldn't be able to do what we do so if you want to help us out maybe you don't have uh the time to read all of the articles maybe you just want something for a couple of minutes here or there one football of a great mix of everything to keep you up to date thank you very much my friends don't forget drop a like on the video hit that subscribe button and i will talk to you real soon